waiting for the bus. Oh, yeah. Now, can you keep talking about yeah. shit about my fucking kick? And you annoying me and aggravating me. And I'm trying to enjoy my life. Hey, roll us on your wrist a plane giant. Oh, 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 on your wrist a plane giant standing at the bus stop sucking on a lollipop once she gets pumping it's hard to make the hottie stop hottie stop 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 you ready all right now <laughs> this will be a crazy ride i'm warning you now the following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news celebrity entertainment and a splash of controversy We're live. It's time to talk about non-black people trying to defend Cooney. Because what gives you the right? <laughs> oh baby, I'm gonna act a fool tonight. is not black. Let's start with that. Cardi B is not black. Let's start with that. And so to defend cooning of this sort, It's interesting, but honestly, it's not shocking. Cardi B wanting coons to coon is not shocking. Cardi B tapped into the black culture and she certainly has the, the broken dialect, baby. but she's okay with Coons Coonan. <laughs> and I just want to give you all some understanding. I want to I want to add some texture to this conversation because I said this about this man and good evening. I'm so, I didn't even say hello cuz I wanted to get right to the goddamn point. Hit thumbs up on y'all way in here. Y'all know when y'all on my bus, I don't request anything of you but to pay your fare and hit the thumbs up button which is free, okay? Cardi B saying black people can coon and play into negative caricatures and harmful stereotypes about black people. It says a lot about her, but it really says the same thing that we've been seeing from her through her actions all along. The man in question is right here, right? Let's make a little, let's, let's, let's make it a little big on the screen. Let's look at some of the things that he does. I mean, if he don't look just like this goddamn caricature, I don't know who or what the hell does. He knows exactly what the fuck his corny ass is doing. And it's beyond being corny. It's tap dancing. It's what some of the old folks call shucking and jiving. A raccoon is going to be a raccoon is going to be a raccoon. Let's take a look at this right here. Yo, I can't be the only one tired of son's antics. The crawfish cafe appetizer had my boy slumped with the itis. Then all of a sudden, he just wakes up and starts transforming into Billy the Buffoon. You 5'11", 260 with the extra medium shimmery satin spandex from Wet Seal. That's unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm about to get you ejected from the venue, fam. Then you double down with the Forever 21 spaghetti strap tank top with a splash of spicy. Now peep the bald fade ascending into that man bun while he did that hybrid Tootsie Roll dance with a vigorous shoulder shimmy. 
mixed with that zesty Harlem shake. Then he ended off the theatrics with a violent pelvic thrust that was conjuring up Richard Simmons like none other. Then my boy went super crazy with the fanny pack around the waist, concealing the Fenty lip gloss and the MAC mascara. Homie dumbing out, riding that gender neutral wave like crazy. I couldn't even help but notice them 100 yard long shoestrings that's tied so tight, it got both sides touching like a gang truce on them DSW Caucasian yoga influencer Adidas. Those are for comfort, not for compliments. Then I peeped that gold chain that's thinner than the air at Mile High Stadium and lighter than Michael Jackson. I'm sick of you, son. He was absolutely right about everything. But that it hit me right in the spirit when he said that this is a Forever 21 spaghetti strap. Because it's definitely... A Forever 21 spaghetti strap. And he's not doing any of this for the entertainment of black people. Okay? We're going to get into what Cardi B had to say in a minute, but I just want to let you all know that I called this man a coon a while ago. And there were a handful of people, not many, because most people that get it fucking get it. Okay? Why you calling him a coon? He just doing his content and having fun. It may not be for you, baby. As mediums evolve, so does cooning, right? Because back in the day, like every coon don't look like Samuel O. Jackson and DeJanko. Every coon don't look like that. And so mediums have evolved. Now we have social media. You don't actually have to find a white supremacist in person and say, what can I do to help enhance the supremacy that you put forth against my brothers and sisters? Because fuck them. That's not exactly how it works anymore. Back away from the portrait and take a look at the landscape. There are many ways that you can assist a narrative, a fucked up stereotype, and all types of harmful stigmas to and about black people without having to be in person and doing it the way that it was done in the 60s. I'm gonna need y'all to wake the hell up. Everybody act like they woke, but are your eyes even open? I'm trying to understand. We talking about the same man that called himself Gorilla, called himself Gorilla. And it took him so long to understand how harmful and what, what type of negativity he was feeding into about us being compared to monkeys over and over and over again. And he changed his name from Big Gorilla to Big Groove. But at first he said he wasn't going to change it. And so the education about how harmful what the fuck he got going on When the education has been offered dozens of times, he just doesn't want it. There is a paycheck attached to this bullshit that he does. Him and his, he, he got a new friend now. He doing it with too. Crazy over chicken. And so when it feeds harmful stereotypes, that originate from white supremacy and you use a mechanism as powerful and as relevant as social media to help it go further, to amplify it, nigga, that's fucking coon. And if you didn't know it, then I'm telling you today. Coonan is not literally tap dancing in front of a slave master anymore. Hello, slave masters don't even fucking exist no more. But white supremacy is still alive. And so there are ways you can feed into the negativity that originated with them and fuel the bullshit that they do. And that's exactly what this nigga is doing. That's what he's been doing. At this point, this is his formula to tap dance in this specific type of way. 
And so for Cardi B, a non-black woman, to come into the black community and say, oh, it's always y'all tearing one another down. Let that man live. Mr. Beast, the big white YouTuber, he be doing corny shit like that that the kids like. First of all, white is not the standard. White is not the example. Let's start there. We're, we're talking about a woman who literally called black women that she didn't agree with. She called them cockroaches. And this is the woman saying, black woman, first of all, she's pandering to some of y'all. And should or could we be worried about him? I mean, we, we would have to be worried about him. This nigga's thrown in our faces. I guarantee you, there's nobody in my chat right now. There's nearly nobody watching this video right now that follows this nigga. But somehow this nigga makes his way to everybody's timeline because people are calling him out because they tired of his shit. That's it. Just don't like it. That's the bottom line. Now I reported on the uh what's what's it called? The uh the petition. The petition to ban him. Cardi B tries to use that in her argument, and I'm gonna pull up her argument in just a second. Okay. Let me let me make sure I had this plan. Yo, I can't be the only one tired of some, but I'll mute it. Cardi bring Cardi B brings up the petition and says, y'all are trying to get this man banned from social media. Y'all trying to, y'all trying to stop him from a bag. Ain't nobody trying to stop him from a fucking bag. But we are going to have conversation when a nigga like that wants to be viral and he knows that these big ass, bulky, muscular ass, fucking outrageous dances in the middle of restaurants when people are just trying to enjoy their motherfucking meal, he knows they're going to go viral and they're going to start a goddamn conversation. And that's exactly what the fuck we're having. A conversation. This is what he wants. Stop defending his ass. He's the type of nigga that don't give a fuck whether it's positive or negative. He just wants to be talked about. Whether black people like it or not, whether black people feel like he's a race traitor or not, he doesn't give a fuck. As long as he's talked about, it's all the fuck he care about. So shut the hell up. And so when it comes to the quote unquote petition, to get him banned, because, yeah, he's not hurting anybody. He's not shooting anybody. He's not promoting any physical violence, right? But he's feeding into negative Black stereotypes. Use your fucking brain. The petition ain't going to work. It was just for the sake of seeing how many people were going to sign off on that notion. Did I sign it? Yes, the fuck I did. But do I know that he's not going to get banned just because we don't like his content? I have enough common sense to know that. Stop it. Stop being so naive. Y'all trying to stop, nobody's trying to stop his bag. But the education has been offered time after time after time after time. And he don't give a fuck. He like, listen, this is how I pay my rent. I'm going to dance for these white people that think it's funny. And there's a difference between people laughing at you rather than laughing with you. Come on now. Like, who were you raised by? Did your parents not teach you that when you were in grade school? Just because people going to laugh with you, it doesn't mean that you're not the ass end of the goddamn joke. Are you serious right now? Are you really? Let's take a look at one of his latest antics on mute, of course, because I'm pretty sure there's some music back here. Make sure you hit thumbs up on the video if you haven't already. I know it's late. I'm live doing two back-to-back -back lives just to let you know look at it what's that corn cheese corn cheese you know what time it is you know what time it is shark bite mm. look at all this chicken look at it look at it what's that corn cheese corn cheese you know what time it is you know what time it is shark bite Mm. 
at all this Girl. chicken. Please Look at it. My, Look at it. What's that? Conchie. Please stop playing. Please stop playing and acting like this man don't know what the hell he got going on and what the hell he doing. Please. He is fully aware that what he's doing is feeding into a goddamn caricature. He knows this. He doesn't care. Do you see how similar he looks to the minstrel over here? And then to do all this to a watermelon at that, it just puts the icing on the cake. Baby, if you want to stay blind and oblivious and say he's not cooning, he's just making his corny content. Y'all just don't like it. Y'all are reaching, saying that he's cooning. No, you're intentionally, intentionally obtuse intentionally obtuse and so for cardi to step up and defend cooning pertaining to the offense taken from a community that she's not a part of she doesn't understand the nuances i've been seeing this tweet go around about this big burly guy just dancing around in the restaurants and, you know, just let him make his corny stuff. It's not for me. Just let him make his corny stuff. How about you stay the fuck out of black people business because you're not black. You don't understand. Either you don't understand or you don't want to understand or you just don't care. But you're not black and you can't really speak to the nuances of what's truly and historically. That's how I like that. You cannot truly speak about the nuances of what is historically offensive to us as black people. Should Big Groove be banned? Like I said, use your brains now. He's able to do whatever the hell he wants. However, like I said, the education has been offered dozens of times and he and his new little chicken eating friend, he's got a new little black guy with him. They just, and they just eat the chicken and all types of bullshit. They don't care. Therefore, we're going to classify them as exactly what the fuck they are. Raccoons. R-A lowercase, C-O-O-N uppercase. We're going to classify them as they are. And I think that playing dense is the new form of trolling. At least I hope that it is. Share this live with somebody. Share it via text message. Share it with somebody that you've been trying to have this conversation with and they just don't motherfucking get it. Or they've been trying to defend him and say, y'all reaching, no, ain't nobody reaching. And I'm gonna educate you after we listen to what the, and I shouldn't have to, but but I will, you know, cause I, 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 I do black history, right? I do black history all year round. I'm really waiting to talk about black history until after February. Cause you got all the people that give a fuck about black history. It was, it's about February, let's talk about black history. No bitch, I talk about this shit 365. Because black history is way more than a month. But that's a whole nother conversation. So on March 1st, I'm rolling out black history shorts is what I'll be doing in March. Okay? Because I just don't even want to be like in the algorithm to make it seem like because it's February, I'm talking about black history. I have a black history moment every goddamn show when I'm talking about multiple topics. If I put together a show, if it's not a singular show and I'm talking about several things, oh baby, I'm throwing the black history up in there. You hear me? But it's a whole, but I, I just hate the people that only want to talk about black excellence and black history in February. This shit literally makes my ass itch, honestly. So let's get into what Cardi B had to say. But just so y'all know, I talk about black history all year round. Let's get into this. Now let's spend a little bit of time with our ancestors or at least listening to them. Because you know they always tell us you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. So let's get into a little bit of black history with this black history moment.
All right. So. All right. So let, let me start. All right. So the topic is, right? So I've been seeing on Twitter and I've been seeing on TikTok and I've been seeing on Instagram this going viral. Shit, I should have taken a picture of the guys that I'm talking about. About, you know, that big brolic guy that be in the restaurants dancing all crazy. And the other skinny one that be acting like a cracker like, ew, 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 ew. So I've been seeing people. Let me just say this really quickly. When it comes to black history being illegal <clears throat> to be taught in schools, honestly, I'm not upset. And that's an unpopular opinion, but I'm not fucking upset. Think about it. These are people that already don't want us to know who the fuck we are all of our contributions to society. We really shouldn't even trust white people to be teaching our own history to our kids because they're going to water it down and revisionist history is a thing. So it's absurd, but it's really something that I would chuckle at. If I was a parent down in Florida, I'd be like, okay, that just means you can't teach my kid no crooked shit about black history because please believe they always go they're going to change. I forget the name that they were trying to call slaves. They didn't even want to say slaves. They said like, was it indentured servants or something like that? You cannot trust the oppressor to properly teach your kids the true greatness and the excellence that lives within us. Is it crazy? Absolutely. But Black history need to be taught at home by Black parents or other Black institutions and after-school clubs that are ran by Black people. I'm not upset at that one bit because they shouldn't be teaching our kids Black history. You really trust them to do it right when they don't want us to know how great we are? <laughs> Indentured service. That's what it was? I thought so. Trying to make petition for their content to get banned. And I've seen a lot of people compare their content to, um, I guess, blackface or something, or like how, how people used to act for white people entertainment and whatever, whatever. And I must admit, their content is very cringy. Like, every single time I see it, I just like roll my eyes and I'll be like, oh my gosh, like this shit is so corny. However, however, I have kids um, as y'all know, um, I have kids, I have a daughter and some, she do be on TikTok and she do be watching a lot of YouTube shorts and also my niece that live with me, she watches a lot of YouTube shorts and they watch a lot of TikToks and everything. And, um, when you watch YouTube shorts that kids be watching, um, a lot of the, the, a lot of the content be very cringy. Like the comedy there is nowadays, it's not like back in the day comedies. The comedy is very cringy. People eating like animals, judging foods and everything. Just, it's just very weird right now. And I'm here to tell y'all, right? That if you think those two guys content is cringy, trust me, there is way, way more to come. And like those content, we might find it cringy, but kids, I guess, like it. You know what I'm saying? And instead of y'all eating those guys up, instead of y'all eating those guys up and like trying to sign petitions so they could ban on social media, like I just find that shit so lame because it's like, why, why are y'all signing petitions to get money, uh, money off these guys pockets like they're not cursing on the in the content they're not promoting all this gang violence they're not being bums they're actually getting paid by these restaurants to do it and let me tell you something there is a lot of white a lot of whites and a lot of um content creators from they're european or they're russian some of them don't even like speak english they're doing the same amount of content but they're getting a lot way more views doing the same doing the same thing that those two black men are doing oh they doing the same thing let me jump into my black mother bag real back real quick if everybody else was doing the same thing aka jumping off a bridge or robbing a bank would you do it too stop acting like the standard is what the fuck everybody else got going on and what they doing 
went and I checked out Mr. B's content and nothing about it is feeding into harmful stereotypes about white people. There is a difference. And if you don't understand the nuance, then you don't need to fucking be speaking up about it. You're not the spokesperson for this, nor should you be the one going to bat. I'm sure he is so happy, Big Groove, that you stepping up to defend his bitch ass. And I wouldn't be surprised if I saw y'all in a skit tomorrow. Pathetic. You can get a check any old type of way. That don't mean betray your people and feed into negative stigma and feed the oppressors with the content that they need to understand that there are modern ways to tap dance and to shuck and jive. You're not black. You cannot tell black people what to and to not be offended by and to sound off by. And this is coming from a very fucking emotional woman. Anytime she sees a tweet that she don't like about her, here she go talking about it. Bitch, why can't we talk about what we don't like about these content creators that are doing shit that we don't like? They want to go viral. They want to be the topic of discussion. And so they're the fuck for they are. And they're getting paid double. Uh, if you look at Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, I think his name is Mr. Beast, right? His content is kind of cringy too. Like, it's like not funny to me, but kids like it. And because he has so much support by his community that uh, he gets so much views and he's, he's a millionaire. He got his own food chain now. He got his own food chain. He has so much money now. And he's practically was doing the same thing that these guys are doing. And while their own community. He's not doing the same thing that these guys are doing. He's not. But you don't really understand all that goes in to said situation. Why? Why do you ask? Is, is, is someone asking why? <clears throat> is petitioning to get them removed from social media these white folks that are doing the same content are going up 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 and they're getting like endorsement deal for big brands they're not just getting endorsement deals by restaurants they're getting endorsement deals by billion dollar brands and they're becoming a billion dollar brand their self do you understand that if you think that is lame as fuck to dance and crunk around in a restaurant while other people do that guess what there is white content creators that are drinking soda out of ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollar pair of shoes and guess what they're 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 fucking 
drinking soda at a, a $10,000 pair of shoes because they're able to afford it because there's nobody doing petitions to get them banned off social media. So Thank you, Cosmic Carbon to the uh, Sun Goddess. Exactly, Jane. She needs to be quiet. Um, she's not us at all. She's anti-us. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And all of these white but the white, but the white people, but the white people also stole us from Africa and kidnapped us and brought us over here. So are they really the fucking standard? Sometimes, yeah, it is crabs in the barrel type shit from us. This is not one of those motherfucking times. This is one of those times where we're trying to educate a brother and we only need black people in the conversation when it comes to that. However, he is he he doesn't want the information. Sometimes we do say, you know, white people get along in in, in XYZ type sense and and they can do certain things and we can't. But that's not this type of case. Sometimes we can talk about the teamwork amongst the white community, the Latin community. We can talk about how they stick together instead of always. But that's not this type of case. It's not. And if you're not cultured enough or experienced enough or <gasps> black, then you wouldn't understand when and how to bring that in. White is not the standard. No, it's not. But sometimes when we're counterproductive within our own community, sometimes we'll bring that up and say, you know, other communities don't do this. Come on, let's get along. But that's not this case. So before y'all try to like go super deep and talking about, look at these motherfucker jive turkey and blah, blah, blah. Bro, let them be, bro. The, re the content, um, um, the content that is being created Nowadays, it's corny. It's not for me personally. It's not for me personally, but it's like the white motherfuckers is doing it and they're getting big checks for it. So let them be. These guys are not in the streets. These guys are trying to provide. They're using social. Because that's what it's about. Checks over morals media to their advantage without promoting violence without being bums without being disrespectful without fighting without cursing without doing none of that let people live bro stop being crabs in a motherfucking barrel the people motherfucking downfall is their own motherfucking people bro stop doing that shit then y'all wonder why white folks they be so is their own people oh not you talking about blacks bitch you're not one of us what the fuck is you really saying what are you really saying? I went and looked and I, I looked at Mr. B's content and is it cringy? Yes. But it doesn't feed into any fucked up stereotypes about white people. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the $10 super chat. I really do appreciate that. And the roses, I appreciate it. Successful. Oh my gosh, I don't understand why they got a billion dollar lip gloss company. I don't understand why they, why they get so much views on YouTube. Oh, or so much views on TikTok. Oh, it must be TikTok pushing their content to be the top one. It must be YouTube pushing the content to be the top one. No, it's because they have a community supporting them. And every single time that somebody's doing the same thing from the fucking community, y'all want to bring them out, bring do petitions to get them banned. What type of shit is that? Why would you take? Why would you? Why would you try to take money out of a black, two black men fucking pockets that are not doing anything wrong? But being cheesy and corny. They are doing something wrong. That's that's what I you rather don't they understand. become rich. And that's why you should look shut how the Jake up. Paul became rich. Jake Paul used to Jake do the Paul most corniest content season. ever. His content was so corny and cringy. I never found it amusing. But let me say thank you to this um to House of the Princess for um Black slaves are called involuntary. Re That's what they did. They were saying in schools that they were, um, instead of saying slaves, they were saying individuals who were involuntarily relocated. Like this is this is where we are, like with the school system, not even wanting to be honest. So that's why I'm not upset. I'm not upset that they don't want to teach black history in schools because they won't do it the right way. Call a slave a slave because that's exactly what the hell it was. And thank you for increasing your membership for um for two months. I appreciate that. Um, let's finish listening. She she's got like a minute left to go. 
blood. The kids found their music. And now this man got a million. He owns million dollar mansions. Getting three million dollars out of fucking, uh, fucking fights. Made a whole fucking career. Making more money than rappers. Come on now, bro. Y'all need to stop being crabs in a barrel. Oh, but they look like jive turkeys. They look like this. They look like that. What y'all want them to look like? Y'all want them to be hood niggas? And see, you know, it's a shame that you go from shucking and jiving and thinking that the only other option, they, they shucking and jiving. So what you want them to do? Be hooked? That, that's all that you think exists in the black community. And that's why you should shut the fuck up. Those are not the two only options in the black community. Shucking and jiving and tap dancing for massa. Or hood niggas. Bitch, those are not the only options. You've got people who are educated, who become doctors. You've got bloggers. You've got commentators. You've got editors. You've got writers. You've got people who write books and all other. You've got, there's so many different options. And you go from tap dancing, of which you're defending and cooning, to, oh, you wanted to be in the hood shooting niggas up, huh? See, it's you pushing these fucked up stereotypes about black people. Those aren't the only two options of the destiny, ultimately, of black people. But see here, you are acting like there are only two sides of the spectrum. And black people don't have the right or the ability, should I say, to be something outside of a coon or a hood nigga. That's why you need to stay the fuck out of our business. That's exactly why. You go from cooning to promoting violence as if that's it for us. She talking about Jake Paul, been accused of being a racist, been accused of pedophilia as well. Mm. Mm. Someone says, so here in the comments, do y'all think they should be banned? I don't think that they should be banned. Hello, speak your, uh, it, it's a free country. As I stated earlier, use your brain, you know what I mean? And by the way, hit thumbs up. If you're looking for ways to support the show, thumbs up is the way to go. You can send a cash app if you want. If not, hit thumbs up because it's free. You don't have to dig into your wallet to support my show. Should they be banned? Because they're doing something that I don't agree with? No. But the fact that society and social media and people in general dozens of times have offered the information to let him know how harmful what he's doing is lets us know all that we need to know. If he should be banned, then God damn it, the white supremacists really need to be banned and that won't work and they'll never be banned. So do I think they should be banned? No. Do I think that they should be educated? Yes. Although they resist the education. This is our community's fault. Why people like her feel comfortable to speak on issues about us. That has nothing to do with them because we get apps because we don't gatekeep. Good point. Good, 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 good point. I see there's one person in the chat capping for Cardi, agreeing with Cardi. She's not lying, though. She absolutely is lying because she's ignorant to our plight, our history, what we've been through, and what negatively fuels some of the shit that continues to oppress us. So she's not right. But hey, you're, you're, you're definitely able to disagree with me in the chat. As long as you're not disrespectful, you are more than welcome to disagree with me. If they cheesy and corny, let that let that shit be. Come on now, bro. That shit is lame. I don't like when I don't like when people do things to get. Stacey, let me ask you a question. Are you willing to call into the show? Because if you're willing to call into the show, it'll make all of our night. And we can certainly have a respectful conversation. You know, just let me know. Comment down below. Um, if Stacy responds and I miss it in the chat, can somebody let me know in the Discord? Thank you very much. Stacy. I would love it for you to call into the show and I'll drop the link for you to do so, all right? To take money out of other people's pockets. 
Because that's how these young men are getting paid. And there's white folks really becoming super successful doing the same content that they're doing. Shit. I don't like that shit. I don't like that shit, y'all. I don't like that. I don't like it. I personally don't like the content. However, as long as they... Okay, so I see what's going on in the chat. Stacy says, I'm not black, but I have a different point of view. And, you know, to keep it respectful um, with you, Stacy, if you're not black, you, you really don't understand our experience and what we've been through. You don't. The oppression, our ancestors, the stories that our parents and our grandparents and great great grandparents or great grandparents have told us, it's not something that you understand. So, honestly, I don't expect you to get it. I don't expect you to get it. Right. Um, Bacardi is not speaking facts. She's speaking ignorant assumptions and she's speaking based off of stigma and negative stereotypes that have been perpetuated about us throughout. Mm, the decades probably more than that um thank you so much for the five dollar cash app what do we expect from the WAP rapper her content couldn't be considered worse her content could be considered worse should i say um thank you so much for the five dollar super chat i appreciate that stacy says no the lady said i can't be black if i have a different point of view i says so i'm not black if i have a different point of view okay I, I can't keep up with all that you're going back and forth with. And I can't look at every comment in the chat. The, the, the comments are moving. I don't know. I don't know if you're black or not, right? But it seemed like based on your last comment that you're not black. Baby, I don't know. And I'm not here to argue with you about your ethnicity. Um, I would merely say that if you think that Cardi B is spitting, you know how we say, that nigga spitting. If you think she's spitting, then you don't really understand the true history of black people. Speaking of the history of Black people, let's go ahead and get into a little something. Some Again, I think that the, uh, and we're doing a live right after this too. And this live will be over in about, I would say 10 minutes. So again, look at this, look, look at this man and the way he likes to bite into the watermelons or whatever. He looks exactly like the tap dancers in the menstrual shows from back in the day. Okay. It looks exactly like that okay and if you didn't catch this show from the beginning i highly recommend if you came in on the middle right and you watch it to the end rewind it and watch it from the beginning because it's definitely worth the watch but we do have another um stream coming up after this immediately after this about r kelly and Aaliyah's alleged love child mm. I've got some thoughts. So let's just get into a little bit of black history. And I I, I had did some history on the term coon and where it really came from. Um, it was a Kanye video actually last year when I first got back up on my feet after my channel went 100 with the, I think I had like 102,000 subs. And that channel got deleted. I had to get back up off my feet. And one of the first videos I made after then, um, at that time was about cool. So I think I'm going to edit that down and take the Kanye aspect out of it and just upload exactly where the terminology coon came from, because I've been educating people on this. It doesn't have to be February for me to talk about black history, which is kind of why I've been slow to talk about black history this month. I just be disgusted. Uh, but that's a whole nother conversation, right? So there's a woman here that kind of went viral, right? And this is exactly what Cardi was responding to. This is exactly what she was responding to because it, it was totally viral that day. And so this woman said, instead of getting mad, I'm just going to educate. The reason Black Americans specifically do not like the big dancing gorilla dude, and mind you, they call him the gorilla dude because that, is, that was his name. And it took him forever to change it, right? The reason Black Americans specifically do not like the big dancing gorilla dude and chicken boy 
is because there are they are performing uh, menstruacy. Okay, see below. Menstruals in America were people in blackface or. That or is very important because it ain't just a white person trying to perform it. There's a huge or right there. People in blackface or a black person with darkened makeup. And whether you had on the darkened makeup or not. If you're acting like a fucking clown for the entertainment of white people, that's exactly what the fuck it is. That's exactly what it was. There were some people that were so, so beautifully brown skinned, right? Their skin was already dark that they didn't need any makeup to perform this and they would just tap dance accordingly. And these were these, and this is what certain people did at that time, respectively, to, um, I would say, be safe. They wanted to make sure they didn't die. They wanted to make sure they were never the next victim of a lynching. But it was also a sellout moment, despite the fact that they were trying to sell their lives, uh, save their lives, should I say. Again, if you've ever seen Django, you know that Samuel L. Jackson's part in that film was just that. And he had to wear no extra makeup to, 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 to play that character and to kiss his master's ass and to help oppress other Black people with his gestures. He didn't have to. He was already the color of what the performance was aiming for, should I say. This is why reverse colorism doesn't exist. This is why reverse racism doesn't exist. Does prejudice exist? Yes. But some people didn't even have to put on the makeup to do shit like this. To serve and entertain the masters. We going we, we going there tonight. We going there tonight. Somebody in the chat said chicken boy. Yeah, there's another there's another boy that the gorilla groove got and linked up with. And all he does is go crazy and do the same stuff over chicken all the time, right? Watermelon chicken, niggas, right? Mm. 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 If you see these images or anything similar on social media and think anything close to well. What's with performing and dancing for racist audience? Remove yourself from the lives of these people. Okay. And again, this is this is the video of the the here's the chicken guy for the people asking, who is he? Who are you talking about the chicken guy? This is the chicken guy. Mm. And if you understand black culture, then you get it. This shit is not funny. It's corny. And it's only funny to white people. And it's not really that it's funny to white people. It's... Look at these nigga caricatures. <laughs> That's exactly how they laughing at you. But, you know, it can be mistaken as a with you. And when people get views nowadays, they equate that to some sort of infamy. Long ago, I, I I blame it on Jerry Springer, but before Jerry Springer, that was Jenny Jones. Don't get me started on the difference in reality TV and talk show TV and now, but the line was heavily blurred back in the day where people confused the everyday person who was able to get attention of the nation, which was only television at that time because the internet didn't exist. There was a time when people confused fame for shame. Think about Jerry Spring and everybody who was willing to... Jenny Jones was another one. Somebody even got killed over Jenny Jones, right? But don't get me started. Don't get me started. I'll tell that story on another day. People do not know the difference in where to draw the line in the, in, in the sand. They think that they're famous and they really should be ashamed. There's a difference between fame and shame. 
And niggas don't know where to draw people, not even niggas, right? Because when I say niggas, I'm not, not to look. Anybody can be ghetto. The Kardashians are ghetto. I've done a video on that before. People don't know where to draw the line and they think that just because they're getting exposure, it equates fame. No, baby, that's shame. That's disgusting that you would even put this shit out there and want to go viral and get quote unquote internet famous over this. And so I did this video yesterday. I think it was like four in the morning. I was tired. I was in my bathroom, baby. I put that motherfucker on private. I said I was too sleepy. I wasn't quite reading correctly. I didn't provide enough education. And so here I am today doing what I do. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you hit thumbs up. I guarantee you, you can't scroll through your phone and find a single black person that finds this shit right here funny. I guarantee, find me a nigga that think that this is entertainment. This is only funny to white people because he's feeding into what? A caricature. The fucked up caricature is in the negative and harmful stereotypes and stigma that surrounds And so I thought I would just regularly in this video, but I might as well go ahead and in this video, should I? Hmm. Should I? Sometimes I get hesitant because sometimes I feel like people only want to see like negativity and things of that nature. And when I post stuff, when I post stuff outside of celebrity drama, people don't be fucking with it. When I post black history videos that stand alone, people don't watch them. When I post black news information that stands alone, people don't watch them. People only want to watch and they want to engage with negative stuff. Why is that? But you know what? I'm in the mood to share some knowledge. Uh, since we're talking about black history... Um, the lack of knowledge thereof of Cardi B, who is defending such, fuck it, you know. Um, I might as well do it, right? The term Uncle Tom, define Uncle Tom for me down below in the chat. Everybody watching, what do you think an Uncle Tom is? Can everybody define it for me down below in the chat, please? All right. And we're going to get into the next part, which is the last part of this video. Okay. Thank, first of all, thank y'all so much for watching. All 150 of y'all do not have to be here this evening. And especially my girl, hold up, hold up, hold up. I just, I just seen a OG come in the chat. Tay Tay G in the chat. She's been gone for a while. No, she's been busy with life and things like that. But I'm so happy to see Tay Tay. Okay. Make sure y'all hit thumbs up on the video and define Uncle Tom in the chat. Seriously. Okay. Someone says Terry Crews. I saw a traitor. I see Uncle Ruckus. Do anything for whites and go against their own kind. I see a traitor. Hmm. Um, this is the, th this is the problem and it's not you all, it's the fucked up misconception of who uncle Tom really was. And so I want to let you know, everybody that thinks when you say uncle Tom, it's a traitor goes against his own kind. It's wrong. It's been flipped. He was actually the complete and absolute polar, polar opposite. And that's why I think that the black history moments that I do way outside of February are so important, are so important. And it's important that we stop demonizing and villainizing this term and calling sellouts and coons and traitors, race traitors, 
It's important that we stop using that term to describe people because honestly, the legacy of Uncle Tom has been hijacked. And so I did a video on Uncle Tom. I did a Black History segment and moment on Uncle Tom, but I want to give you all a part two. Because we don't even know our own history sometimes. I don't know if we learned this in school or if the rumor just grew legs and everybody just, it, it stuck with everybody like glue. But that is the farthest thing from the truth about Uncle Tom. Absolutely. He was a hero. And so this is some of what we need to talk about. They demonized this black man and it was all done based off of on screen on-screen adaptations and presentations of his character. And because, you know, we'll just watch a movie and, and believe it and run with it. And even some of the greats misuse these terms. I'm gonna get on, I'm, I, I, I'm going to get into it. We're gonna get into it, all right? Y'all make sure y'all hit thumbs up and let's keep it pushing. See, I, see I'm, I'm glad I asked that question to see that so many people are misinformed. And I'm not upset at any of you for being misinformed because even me, myself, before I actually researched this, that's what I thought it meant. But until I did my extensive digging, I'm like, damn. And really found out who he was. That's when I understood, oh, they did this man dirty and got people out here calling. Yeah, let's get into it. Get into this black owned business, Stickies. It's got things for inside your home, outside your home, and even on the go. JasmineMadeIt.com is your new destination for black girl magic mugs, tumblers, and even wine glasses. You can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses. There's a lot going on for a low price over at JasmineMadeIt.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. Let JasmineMadeIt.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching the hint or paying the rent? Y'all asses all get to stepping. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get to stepping with this nostalgic Martin themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on JasmineMadeIt.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. They've got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com, and I'll see you over there. All right, so we are back, and thank you all so much for being here and allowing me to share with you some of the vital research that I've been able to obtain about some of the greats in history and Uncle Tom is certainly one of them, believe it or not. I know it's shocking to a lot of you and I can tell by the frequency in the chat. So let's talk. Let's talk. Uncle Tom's story has been distorted over the years, heavily distorted. Revisionist history is definitely a thing. I say that all the time and that's why I'm not against Black history not being taught in public schools by teachers who don't even want to really teach the real real. They don't even want to say the word slave because they want to sugarcoat it and butter it up to make themselves seem a bit more innocent. Uh-uh, not over here. Uncle Tom's story has been very distorted over the years. And his character was actually based on Josiah Henson. So this man that you see here, his real name is Josiah Henson. Okay, now he hailed from Maryland, from Maryland and used the Underground Railroad to actually gain his freedom. And throughout the decades, he went from hero to sellout. And it was literally based off of the stories and the on-screen depictions of him. They portrayed him at, some, at several points as spineless, weak, and submissive. Now, the on-screen adaptation of the film, it was based on a book which was actually an anti-slavery novel. And it was written by an abolitionist named Harriet Beecher Stowe. 
Now, this was a white woman. Now, she completely, she actually scoffed. She was scoffed at for portraying a slave as an actual human. So this was a white woman who wrote this book about Uncle Tom, a.k.a. Josiah Henson, and she was scoffed at for portraying a slave as an actual human with profound thoughts and emotions. That's the beginning of Uncle Tom in literature in any sort. And an on-screen depiction that we had never seen before at that time. We had never seen uh, a slave, right? Being portrayed as somebody that was um, intelligent. They had profound emotions and thoughts. But back to the book. Now the book was published um, in 1985 on March 20th. Now the book was actually considered to be the greatest American novel of all time, believe it or not, okay? And this is how amazing it was. An article published by the Boston Morning Post, the year that it was released, it stated, and I quote, everybody in the country had read it, was reading it, or was about to read it, end quote. And it also said that at that time, publishers had to keep 17 different printing presses running 24 seven, just to keep up with the demand of the book. Okay. Now in the United States alone, Uncle Tom's Cabin sold over 300,000 copies. It went on to be regarded as the best selling novel of the 19th century. So in some of the very first on-screen adaptation or depiction, should I say, of Uncle Tom, he was whipped to death. Whipped to death for what, you may ask? For refusing to disclose where two female runaway slaves were. Now, the two female runaway slaves, this is how heroic he was depicted in the beginning when they first started writing about him and putting him on screen, but somewhere it changed. Both of these runaway slaves that he wouldn't give up the information on based on this on-screen adaptation, they were sexually assaulted by their masters, which ain't hard to believe. We hear about that all the time. Slave masters doing whatever they wanted to do to female slaves, right? Disgusting. However, over time, the on-screen depictions, they began to change. They begin to change in such a way where they would portray Uncle Tom as subservient. Vocabulary word of the day. Subservient. Weak. Speaking broken English. Like he was illiterate. And they would portray him as someone who would bend over backwards and do anything to please his slave masters. Now, here's the part that's really going to get you going, or at least it got me going. I'm like, damn, really? Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali. They both clearly did not know the history of the real Uncle Tom, of the real Josiah Henson. Malcolm X, oftentimes in his, in his rhetoric, and what he would say, right? He was he was a profound, you know, public speaker, activist, all that stuff. And so was Muhammad Ali, to be, you know, to be honest, even though he was a boxer, he wore both of those hats very well. Malcolm X would use the term Uncle Tom to describe a quote unquote race traitor because of the movies that were out at that time. And you gotta think about, let me finish. Muhammad Ali would also refer to people as Uncle Tom's if and when his opponent wouldn't call him or respect him by his Muslim name. So both Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X would use the term Uncle Tom because movies is all it took for them. I guess no one picked up an encyclopedia at that time to really, look, or, or maybe the encyclopedias weren't there. Let's let's keep it a buck. Maybe they weren't there. Whatever the case is, they were using that term, Uncle Tom, 
to talk down on and to degrade black people that they did not agree with or who weren't subscribing to their agenda. And so that helped the harmful twisting of Uncle Tom in the terminology. It helped amplify that. And so when you think about somebody who was literally depicted in some of the early on films who signed his life away and he should be remembered for that, signed his life away. He should be remembered for the bravery and the aversion to violence that he stood for, Uncle Tom, because he never... He never did anything that was race trading, but the films at that time. And when we think about how did it get flipped then? Excuse me. And mind you, this is a part two. This is a part two. I did a part one already talking about the initial flipping and how Uncle Tom really shouldn't be a term that you use to insult anybody. Uh, it's really a term of endearment. When we understand that the term only got flipped through Hollywood and people who make films, there weren't any Black people doing it at that time. There were no Black people that made films at that time. So it seems like white supremacist work to me. It absolutely does. Because, hell, they thought that it was absurd enough that when the author of the book, the author of the book who was a white woman, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Harriet Beecher Stowe, they felt like not you portraying a slave as somebody with profound thoughts and emotions, excuse me, she was being dragged at that time by her own people. So, if you couldn't even portray slaves as smart and intelligent and profound, you know damn well they weren't in control of any type of production, directing, anything of that nature. That means that white supremacy stepped in and decided, let's, let's turn this around and demonize this nigga and every, because everybody knows his name. Book out. They got this going on. Let's flip the script. And let's dirty up his name. And let's make an insult that they can use against their own fucking people. Let's make him a traitor. So that when they feel somebody's tap dancing or kissing our asses, which we want, they can call them this motherfucker's name. It's white supremacist work. It's revisionist history. And this is why it's so important that when you watch films... That you do your own fucking research. Because they did all of this through the medium of television at that time. And as I stated earlier, when we talk about mediums, right? The internet is a medium. TV is a medium. Radio is a medium. The phone is a medium. As mediums evolve, so does everything else. So we didn't have the internet at that time. So for people to act like Coonan is just actually tap dancing in front and kidding, no, times have changed. Mediums have changed and therefore Cooning has changed. I did a whole video on this. The video don't even have a thousand views. But... Some of you all beg and plead that I make more black history videos or that I make, you know, not to say more positive videos, but y'all be begging the blogs and people to make more positive videos. But the fact of the matter is talking about celebrity drama gets more of your attention than anything. I have a bone to pick with some of you all. Because sure, I'll make the positive videos. Sure, I'll make the black news videos. Sure, I'll make the black history videos. But y'all don't fucking watch them. 
I did a whole standalone video about this. The video doesn't even have a thousand views. Revisionist history is very sickening. And it's crazy that I have in my notes right here. I don't think we should trust schools to teach us real black history. And it's crazy. Somebody commented something earlier in the comments about that. You know, they're making it illegal to teach black history in schools. I don't have a problem with it. Is it crazy that y'all are making it illegal? Yes. It lets us know how y'all really fucking feel. It lets us know how afraid you all are. White supremacists. How afraid you all are of, real, of us truly understanding our greatness and our contribution to society and just how powerful we are. It lets us know how afraid of us y'all are. Oh, absolutely. It tells us something. But we shouldn't be fighting to get it back in schools. Oh, no, 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 no. Teach that shit at home. Find an after school club. Find somebody online that specializes in black history and teaching it in a way that is palatable and digestible for our kids to really understand so that they know that there is more than just a Chris Sean and a Tommy Lee and an Natalie Nunn and a Zeus Network. There's more to us than that. Some of us are doctors. Some of us are astronauts. Some of us are dentists. So, you know, there's, there's so many different ways you can go about living your life as a black person and black excellence, creating peanut butter, the ironing board, everything that we've survived and everything that we've invented. We need to be teaching that shit ourselves. Yeah. Should we not be voting for people who want to make it illegal? Because illegal is a stretch. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should just stop voting for them people. But let's not fight to get it back in schools because you know they're going to water it down the white way. The white way. We done invented the GPS, caller ID, peanut butter, the iron board. Like, like I could go on and on and on, on, on about everything that we have invented. And some of the patents have been stolen from us, but we invented the shit. You said you watched it. Thank you so much, LD. I appreciate that. You know, I try to, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk about celebrity crap. People act like they want the, the black history. Cool, let me upload it. And then it performs poorly because people, they want juicy gossip, mess, messy, mess. Like that's all they fucking want to talk about. And that's why I create the format of the show that I make. I talk about messy stuff and I go, messy topic, black excellence, messy topic, black history, messy topic, black people doing amazing shit. And I have to put it that way just to force feed people to digest the great shit that has happened or is happening within the black community. And I feel like that sucks, but I understand that that's the format. But don't 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 keep asking me to make standalone videos about it because it looks horrible for my numbers. It looks horrible for me to upload videos that don't even get a thousand views because niggas don't want to watch and click on positive shit. They want to click on black history. They just don't. I would love it if those videos perform well because I feel like those videos are vital and unnecessary and everybody's not going to make it to the 49th minute in my video. So I'm like, let me, let me upload it separately. Nope. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I, I, I need us to really change our mindset and to really want to click on more positive headlines about us. I need our people to do something different. And I have to do it with myself, too. I be scrolling, you know, but now I have my algorithm curated in such a way where I'll see something about, pop, you know, black history or whatever. And I'll keep scrolling. And I'm like, you know what? Let me scroll back. Am I just looking for mess or let's go ahead and watch this?
Like, come on, we shouldn't want to see Krishana Blueface in the messy ass blogs all day. At some point, we should want to stop and click one or two. And, and they're short videos. We're not, I'm not talking about no hour long video, right? I'm talking about a video is five minutes or less. Come on now. Come on now. Even Moses lost his patience with them. <laughs> Thank you for the five dollars super chat, Eric Boykins. It's really sad. I can't believe it hasn't hit one k. It shows the majority's interest. It does, and so people be like, "All oh, y'all talk about it. How am I going to survive?" And especially because I feel like I'm like this close from quit my nine to five to wanting to do YouTube full time. I'm like this close, not this close, but this close. Like I want to do it full time, but if I if I have to figure out the formula and what people want, it's fucking mess. And that's why I have to mix in messy subject for ten minutes, black excellence for five, messy, you know. And that's that's just what it is. But you know, it whatever. Something I got to work out with myself. Um and and yeah. Cause I don't got time. Cause I I am about black news and celebrity entertainment. I'm about I'm about black history as well. But I don't have time for anybody to assume that oh you talk about this mess. No the fuck I don't. But what I do know what gets clicks and views is mess. So I'll lead with the mess, and I'll come in and give you some. And you I'm a force. I'm going to force you to learn about this black history and this black excellence at the same time. Okay. Uh, the potato chip, Jack Daniels, exactly. Another one stolen. Jack Daniels is a white man, but it was a black man who actually invented the way and actually created the process to create Jack Daniels. It's no different than the man that discovered the, uh, the North Pole. It wasn't that white man. It was a black man behind that. So yeah, we know these stories. We know these stories. Okay. Um, so that is that. Um, the baby carriage, the stroller, we invented that too. Okay. A good video about Alex Haley and the roots came to my timeline this morning. It was 45 minutes, but I watched it. It was good. Awesome, princess. And that's one period. Period. We 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 gotta retrain our brains to want to absorb more positive. Um, we're we're sponges. Everybody, children are children are definitely sponges, but we're sponges as well, and we um we ooze and we regurgitate the things, and and most of it is subconscious. We ooze and we regurgitate the things that uh that we take in via the content, the music, the videos, the YouTube, the reels, the TikToks, the 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 all all of the, the Twitter. We regurgitate all of that stuff one way, one how. And so I love me a good little nasty piece of um of mess and drama. But at some point my body naturally clicks. I'm like, okay, that's enough. It's been two hours of this get you something that's going to enhance your vocabulary. That's going to like enhance the way that you look at things and the way that you approach and perceive things. Something that is going to positively affect you because the mess ain't going to positively, positively affect you. It's just going to entertain you. And my body kicks in as soon as enough is enough. And I'll even go a week. I'll, I'll you know, it might, it might even be a week when I've been watching the mess two hours a day. And then the next week, I'm like, enough of that. I just can't keep up. And then the next week come, the end of the next week comes, and I'm like, damn, I'm I'm out of the loop with the mess. What the hell are they talking about now? I don't even know because I've been out of the loop for a week because I've been plugging into my intellectual YouTubers that help um, that help me to keep my my train of thought on tap. For, for an example, um, some YouTubers that you really have to be knowledgeable in order to even keep up with that thought process. Kimberly Foster, For Harriet, Jolzy, just to name a few. I ain't going to give them all out, but those are just a few. Um, you 
you you got to make sure that you get your mind to that place. Otherwise, you understand that these algorithms are built to keep you in the mess because they know like you can't turn away from a train wreck. Fuck that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Period. Okay. Alexander Dumas, who wrote the Three Musketeers, is black. Oh, amazing. You have young black males who disrespect, disrespect black females, but praise whites, Hispanics, and Asian. They make millions. They marry other races as if their Nubian queens are not enough. Exactly. Sounds like the passport brothers to me. Um, sounds like the passport brothers to me. Okay. Yes, Kimberly Foster is, oh my gosh, she is just amazing as hell. Okay. I loves me some for Harriet. Do you hear me? Uh, so, yeah, that is what it is. Thank you so much, S Rep, for the $10 super chat. It says truth. I get BS fatigue after watching some channels. Yeah, sometimes I, I like to tune into the mess sometimes. It's like reality TV, right? Even though nothing is ever going to be with flavor of love, what? Like flavor of love was like the epitome <laughs> of reality TV. Oh, it just got it just yo flavor of love in New York. Oh, got my. I mean, it was just everything. But you only got an hour of that once a week for two months. And that was that. And you had to go on about your business. Now you just got this like this this endless funnel, this endless, endless, and endless, you know, endless thing of mess or train wreckish as content. And it's it, like none of it is like it'll satisfy you in the meantime, right? But after a while, it's like, all right, at least something start for for me. I know some people, like, that's all they want to see all day and I don't want to see. I see I get to the Black History moment of the show. They be like, let me click away. I'm about to go watch some of these messy YouTubers. Click away, baby. Because I, I can't, I, I won't be able to do the mess all goddamn day. I can. Okay. <laughs> New York was the that. Did y'all not watch... Flavor of love. Right. Like it wasn't, it was, you didn't even, I think there were only like two fights ever on Flavor of Love. And I think there might've been like three seasons. There were barely any fights. Now Zeus Network, in order to try to like match what Flavor of Love was, is I call Zeus Network all the time. It's a boxing ring. Cause that's exactly what it is. It's all it, fight, fight. Oh, y'all need to fight. Oh, because in order for us to sell this show, y'all got to fight. Like, get the fuck out of here. There's other ways y'all can be dramatic. Be black and be dramatic and have y'all storyline without fucking fight. Come on now. Come on now. Flavor Flav was definitely the outline of reality TV. Okay. Pumpkin spitting at New York, baby, because New York wasn't a fighter. You could tell New York wasn't a fighter. She was a talker. And when Pumpkin spit at her, baby, did you just spit on me? Uh-uh. Uh-uh, I don't play that. <laughs> Let me, you know, I would I would never think, if I saw a Pumpkin in person, I would literally cuss her out to this day right now. Is, my, is, 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 is New York extra? Absolutely. But I would still cuss uh I, I would still cuss pumpkin out to this day. Let me get Tyra to do a little cussing real quick. But you're not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, and you take responsibility for yourself. So, yeah, I came here to talk about Cardi. This whole video was about talking about Cardi. I want y'all to keep it sticky and real down below in the comments. What do you feel about it? 
If you haven't already, hit thumbs up, baby. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, but baby, catch up. Hit the thumbs up button and comment down below, especially if you're chasing the bus, which means you didn't catch it live and you've watched all the way to this point, okay? Hit thumbs up on the video and let me know how you feel. Do you feel like this grooving gorilla is a coon or do you feel like we reaching? I had somebody tell me on Twitter, I think y'all are reaching. I said, I disagree, but I still love you. She said, the beauty is that we ain't got to agree. I said, I see you, sister. Yes. Because, baby, we ain't always going to agree. You follow my channel, you're not always going to agree with me. But Coonan comes in way more than one form. And I said what I said. I told y'all in the Discord I was ready to act a fool tonight. And baby, we just, we're just getting started because in six minutes, it's probably going to be more like 10 minutes. I have the next video scheduled for 2 a.m., which is six minutes from now over here in Baltimore. Shout out to everybody in Maryland, right? Or well, on the East Coast. We're going live immediately after this. <laughs> About R. Kelly and Aaliyah's alleged child. And I planned on changing my shirt. But you know what? I feel like, damn, this blazer looks really good on camera. So I think we're going to be wearing this in the next video as well. And we're going to be talking about Aaliyah and R. Kelly's alleged love child. We're going to be talking about that. In court fashion in the next video. How do you all feel about this blazer? Should it become a regular thing when I feel like I want to read people or read things? I'm liking it. We're going to figure out the placement for this blazer. Shout out to Express. You know, Express ain't cheap, baby. And I bought three blazers this day. So please believe I spent over $200 on three blazers. But baby. It's time for us to drag this girl that's claiming that she's Aaliyah's daughter. Ah! Ah! What's a given? Okay, so what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to come in with my news anchor voice and then we're going to get serious. I should have came into... Because some of y'all really enjoyed my news anchor voice in the Tokyo Tony Fart short that I uploaded not too long ago. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that a little bit more. Thank you so much, Eric, for the $2 super chat. Say you look good. Thank you. So I'm, I'm gonna keep it on. Sick of this shit. And I got all my receipts and things lined up for this little girl. She not a little girl. She's 27. N nonetheless, before I start getting into it, let's go ahead and end this one so that we can start the next one. Y'all make sure y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed to the next video. Be sure to also tag me in your favorite trend of topics on Instagram and on Twitter. This video should definitely automatically take you. I have it set up to the point where it should automatically take you to the next video, the upcoming live that we're about to do in less than 10 minutes, probably in about six minutes. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking the community tab. If you haven't already, there's a new sticky note over there. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup channel, TPJ Network. I think I'll be uploading a lot of the clips from the longer form videos that I do over there. Now that I have a video editor and baby, we are trying to get up there with the consistency. I work my nine to five and it's difficult to be consistent. So I had to bring somebody aboard that can assist me. And that is where we are. But I love y'all so much. And I'm going to see y'all in less than 10 minutes. Let's get ready for that. Shall we? But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.